Here's how you can create a pricing strategy that sells. Now, depending on your product, depending on your service, depending on the business that you're in, you're gonna have different types of competitors, different product options for people, and ultimately the end customer is gonna be very, very different for each one of these products. Now, depending on all these different factors, you can kind of start to create a pricing strategy at least to get started. Now, a lot of people, they have no idea where to get started. And it's kind of like, throwing darts in the dark and hoping that something sticks, right? So you're trying all these different things and you're not really sure if it's working or not because you never really had a pricing strategy in place. I'm gonna help you guys develop your pricing strategy. I and mean, it actually, you know, consists of a few different things, but there are shortcuts to creating a pricing strategy. You don't have to create everything from scratch. So I'm gonna walk you through a couple steps here and hopefully by the end of this video, you can create your own pricing strategy for your product. First and foremost, one of the things that we like to look at when it comes to pricing strategy is let's not reinvent the wheel here. Let's look at who else is selling something similar. Is somebody else selling a product that's very similar to ours? Is somebody else offering a similar service to ours? Are there similar places of business, right? Let's say we are a coffee shop. If we're a coffee shop, there are probably other coffee shops around us. So instead of us guessing on coffee prices, we should take into consideration what other people are doing. I'm not a big fan of basing my pricing strategy on other people, and I've never done that in any of my businesses, but it's important to know what you're dealing with because if everybody in your market is charging, let's say $5 for a cup of coffee, and you believe that your cup of coffee is worth $10, or maybe you're only thinking it's worth $2, that can really affect how you're creating your pricing strategy. So it's important to know what's around you, but don't base your pricing strategy on those people because sometimes they don't even know what they're doing, right? So a lot of times you can find people who created something and they're kind of keeping up the price in the market and it's kind of a standard thing that's gone all around, but you don't have to be like them. You can provide way more value and charge seven or 10 or $15 for a cup of coffee, right? Maybe your coffee has gold flakes in it, I don't know. But you could really do something special as far as the amount of value that you're providing for this customer. And you know, maybe you bundle it with something else. Oh, when you buy a cup of coffee, you also get a free donut. And also we have this little meeting room that we've set aside for you for every single person that buys a cup of coffee. They get this private meeting room. You can have your meetings there. You can do your business there. You can meet your clients there. And that's all included with the price of your cup of coffee. All of a sudden that makes sense, right? It's not so bad. But again, you have to make sure that you're adding that additional value. Or the other option is if you can source your product, if your cost of goods is like, way less than everybody else, then maybe you don't have to charge $5 like everybody else. Maybe you can charge $2 or $3 and still be more profitable than they are. And that way you get a lot more market share because people want the less expensive product. All these things have to be taken into consideration. You can't just go into it blindly, but don't base your pricing strategy based on somebody else. So the most important thing when it comes down to your pricing strategy is what your actual cost to deliver is. Because if your cost to deliver that product, that cup of coffee is you know, $4.50, Selling it for $5 maybe doesn't even make sense. So like before you start the business, you have to assess all these different things. You have to think about your pricing strategy and you have to think about whether it even makes sense to sell your product at the prices that you're planning to sell it for. Because if it's not a price that is going to be profitable for you, maybe it's better to just go into a different business. And yes, maybe the coffee shop is your passion and that's what you've wanted to do your whole life. But that doesn't mean you're, you're like obligated to only do that business. It doesn't mean that you can't start any other business. And in my opinion, I think it's better to start a business that is high cash flow, and even if it's not the one that you like. And then you can use that money to fund this business that's your passion project, because now you're not worried about profitability. And if you wanna sell your coffee for exactly what you're paying for it, exactly what you're paying to deliver it, then you can do that because it's your passion project. Now you have these businesses and really it's kind of interesting because there are companies that I've seen around the world that are exactly like that, where the owners, they make a lot of money in something else. And because they have so much money, they don't need to make money with this business. So they actually are willing to take a loss every single month just to maintain this business and just to be the number one in the world. So sometimes when you see something that's number one in the world or number one in the industry, just look very carefully because 
there's probably a reason that they're number one and it's likely that they're not even really that profitable. So number one in the world doesn't mean number one profitability in the world, right? So there's kind of a very clear distinction there. And I've seen this happen even globally around the world where somebody has a business where they cash flow and then they start a hotel or they start a you know some sort of business on the side that they actually really like and they want to be number one in that industry but they're literally losing money every month it's just kind of a, a money suck it's taking all their money or not all their money but a significant amount of their money every single month and they're not even turning a profit but they're happy because they love that thing maybe it's something that they've dreamed about owning for their whole life they may never be profitable with that thing but everybody has their hobbies right for me it's cars for some people it's something else and yes it does take up money it does burn money but I love it and so I'm always going to do it and so I find that actually in business as well where people will acquire these businesses or start these businesses where they're literally just losing money and it used to blow my mind I was like why would you ever do that but now it's starting to make sense because I know I have things in my life where I really love them and if I have a bunch of money coming in from another business that maybe I don't love so much I will put that money into the business that I do love to continue growing it and making it something that I really really enjoy so anyways your pricing strategy should be based mostly on what you're paying for it so if you're paying let's say two dollars for a cup of coffee now you need to think about what a typical margin would be for a, a business like yours so you can do some research and see let's say coffee shops have a margin of 20 percent which if you're paying two dollars to deliver that cup of coffee which is all the shipping all the materials the employee salaries the rent everything all in it costs you about two dollars to produce a cup of coffee and deliver it to the customer that's including marketing everything so if it costs you two dollars and you want to make a 20 percent margin well then you should be targeting to make you know, 40 50 cents something like that off of this product that means that you're gonna have to have a lot of volume in order to make a good amount of money right if you're only profiting 30 40 50 cents off of each cup of coffee now if you have a product that costs you a little bit more to deliver and now you have to start thinking okay if my competitors are selling their cups of coffee for five dollars and it costs me five dollars just to deliver this product is it worth me selling it for six dollars and trying to compete with everybody else am i able to provide some sort of value there maybe you can add another one dollar in cost so your total cost is six dollars but you provide so much value that somebody's willing to pay ten dollars for that cup of coffee right so you kind of have to evaluate that that should be your key driver when creating your pricing strategy and then from there of course i would look at the landscape see what other people are doing but at the end of the day all that matters is what are you paying for the product if you are paying for the product x amount you cannot charge less than that because otherwise you're going to be losing money and that's very very important going into the business to realize that because the economics are just numbers it's not a guessing game this is what you put in this is what you need to get out in order to be profitable and if that doesn't make sense in the context of the market then maybe it's time to look at another business so anyways guys make sure you like comment and subscribe and i'll see you all in the next video